Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to design paper product packaging in SketchUp, and I'm gonna show you how to export two-dimensional CAD files from SketchUp with true curves. So I've been using SketchUp to design paper product packaging and cutting it out on my Cricut Maker. And I just did a video kind of going over that whole process and introducing you to the Cricut Maker. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. But here's an overview of the workflow I'm gonna go over in this video. So we're gonna create a folded version and a flattened version of the project in SketchUp. And then when we're ready to export, we're gonna explode a copy of that that way we can uh, clean things up a little bit and assign layers so we can distinguish between cut paths and score paths. So the places where we're gonna fold the paper, we wanna be able to distinguish those separately from where we wanna cut the paper. And then from here, we're gonna go and export this as a 3D CAD file. And that's the secret to exporting true curves from SketchUp, so I'm gonna dive into this later on. So as you may know, SketchUp actually doesn't create true curves. They're always going to be segmented, but there is a way to export true curves uh, when you're exporting a 3D DXF or DWG, which I'm gonna go into uh, later on in this video. Now, once we do that, we do need to convert the DWG or the DXF to an SVG file uh, because I found that the Cricut Design Space software doesn't really work well with the CAD export directly from SketchUp. So we're gonna do a little bit of cleanup in um, Adobe Illustrator, which you could also probably do in the free Inkscape if you don't have Illustrator. But so while this video is geared specifically towards the workflow of using the Cricut Maker, a lot of these tips that I'm gonna share are gonna be definitely useful for a laser cutter or CNC machine as well. So definitely stick around if you're interested in using those types of machines with SketchUp. All right, so we're gonna start out in a fresh file in SketchUp Pro. The reason we are using SketchUp Pro is uh, in order to get the export options. You don't have um, the CAD export options in SketchUp Free on SketchUp for Web. You do have that with SketchUp Shop, so you can do most of this using SketchUp Shop if that's what you're working with. Um, but there is a plugin that I am going to be using uh, to connect the lines, which you won't be able to use with SketchUp Shop, but I'm gonna show you work around for that as well. So to get started, we're gonna just create a single face using the rectangle tool. So R for rectangle and we're just gonna create this rectangle and we're gonna resize it to four inch comma three inch. And actually that was the wrong order. So let me do three inch comma four inch. And this is gonna be the first surface. So the first tip I'm gonna give you is we are going to be breaking some SketchUp rules in this workflow. So uh, most of the time when you're working in SketchUp, you wanna create thickness um, to represent the physical objects that you're modeling. In this case, because we're working with paper, we're, we're trying to not just represent paper, but we're basically trying to represent the cutting paths of um, where we want to cut that paper. So. To make it a lot easier, we're going to just use single surfaces to represent each you know, piece of paper. So rule number one when you're doing this, use single thickness faces. So don't go ahead and push, uh, don't extrude the face out to represent the thickness of the paper. Now, if you are trying to use like a CNC machine on plywood, something that does have substantial thickness, this workflow probably isn't going to be the best bet. I mean, it really depends on how the um, plywood is gonna be interacting with each other, if you have joinery and things like that. So you might wanna look into other workflows where you are actually representing the full thickness of the plywood. Um, there's also a plugin that I've checked out called Faber, which um, works pretty good for that type of workflow. All right, so once we have our first surface created, we're going to triple click it 
and tap G to create component. And we're gonna just call this front, um, we'll just call it front. Now the reason we're gonna be labeling everything is because we're gonna use the outliner to um, navigate between the different versions, the folded version and the flattened version. And this is gonna help us select the different entities that we're gonna be you know, trying to edit. So then we're gonna go ahead and create another surface. So this is going to be the, the piece of paper that gets folded around. So this is gonna be you know, folded up like this, right? But right now we're just gonna have it flat like this. So we created the rectangle and we're gonna go ahead and create a component out of this as well. So we'll tap G, we'll call this back. Now, one thing to notice is because we're using single thickness faces, we're going to get different colors on the front and back face. And in this case, since we're kind of breaking some SketchUp rules, we can go ahead and cheat and change the style um, settings, that way everything just looks consistent. So in the styles panel, which if you don't have that, you can go up to window default tray and enable that here. We're gonna go to the edit tab and go to the face settings and we're gonna click on back color and we're just gonna bring these sliders all the way up so it's pure white. So now there's no visual distinction between front and back face because in this case, it doesn't matter to us. We're just using single faces um, to represent everything. All right, so now let's go ahead and create the two wings. Now notice I'm not really worrying about the sizes of things right now. I'm just kind of getting the different folds established and then I'm gonna go and you know fine tune things later on. So I'm just creating each surface, pressing G, we're gonna call this one right. So this is gonna be the flattened version of the project. We're gonna make a copy of this um, and fold it up. That way we can visualize what this looks like all folded up and understand how everything's gonna interact with each other. But before we do that, let's go ahead and select everything and we'll make this into a group. And in the outliner window, we'll just label this. So we'll go right click and rename. We'll call this flat. That, we know, that way we know that this is the flat version. And then we'll grab the move tool, with the letter M, and we'll move this, tap control to make a copy, and we'll move this over here. So we've got two copies of this group and they're both named flat. So let's rename this one to be uh, folded. So this will be the folded version. And then now what we can do is jump inside of this group. And because we went with a group and not a component, we can make changes over here and this version over here won't be affected. So now I can grab the rotate tool. I can rotate this up. Now, one thing that I did uh, when I was working on this is I offset, whenever I folded something up, I offset it um, that way they weren't overlapping with each other. So for example, with all of these still selected, I would just use the move tool and move this back along the green axis. Um, I would go maybe like an eighth of an inch. And then when I folded these, so these are gonna fold around uh, to each other. So with these, now I can fold this like that, and I can fold this one using the rotate tool, which is the letter Q. So I can fold this one, this one's gonna overlap like this, but I don't want these intersecting, so I'm just gonna move this an eighth inch out as well. So it just kinda helps um, visualize how the folds are going to um, you know, interact with each other without overlapping as well. And so now we have a folded version and a flattened version. And the thing that's really cool is we can make changes to these individual components. So let's say I want this corner to be dropped down like that. And notice how over here, that change is made 
as well. And that's because we used components for the individual surfaces of you know each each uh, side of the paper is an individual component. And now we can just keep working on the individual faces. So like I can work over here on the folded version. If I wanna bring this down to match up with that. Or if I want to, I could come over here to this, uh, the flattened version and work on the components over here and it's gonna reflect those changes no matter which version I'm working on. Now, a couple of tips when you're working on this is to use the um, default views. So you can add the views toolbar. It's uh, kind of out of view right now, but if you turn on, it's called views, and that'll bring up this toolbar. And so this is just quickly going to get you to a front or back view which is really handy. And if you go to camera parallel projection, you can see a perfectly aligned view of your model. And it's also handy to turn on x-ray mode, which you can do if you turn on the styles um, toolbar. You can also turn on x-ray in the styles panel. If you go to edit and click on faces, you can turn on x-ray here as well. So this is helpful for seeing through the different sheets and uh, being able to see what's behind whatever it is you're currently working on. Now another thing to be aware of is when you're using arcs, so if I tap A for the arc tool and snap to tangent and double click, it'll cut away that corner for you automatically. But another thing to keep in mind is the segments don't actually matter. You can have a very low segment um, number, which will help when you're creating like really small circles and, and really small arcs and stuff like that. And the reason it doesn't matter is because once we do the 3D export, that's gonna convert to a true curve no matter what. So the number of segments actually doesn't matter. So you can use low segments to help with uh, performance and with small geometry as well. All right, so once you've gotten the design to a point where you wanna prototype something, what we need to do is make a copy of the flattened version and explode it. Now we don't wanna actually explode this version because if we ever wanna come back and make changes, it's nice to have that still intact. So we're gonna just use the move tool, tap control to make a copy, and we're gonna right click and explode. So now we have the individual components now we need to explode this again because if you think about it, we have a common edge here in this component and here in this component. So we don't actually want two tool paths in that location, we only want one. So if we select these and explode them, SketchUp will automatically merge overlapping edges um, into one entity. So you can see here if I try to select, actually it says two edges and that's just because we have this one little edge here. So um, you can see that these edges actually do merge and we're good to go. All right, so the next thing we need to do is organize these edges by tool type. So we have two different tools we're gonna be using on this project, a cutting tool and a scoring tool. So we need to indicate which lines we want cut and which lines we want scored. And the way you do that with Cricut Design Space is with layers. Now, typically in SketchUp, you never want to assign loose entities away from layer zero. In this case, we need to break another SketchUp rule because groups and components are completely ignored by Cricut Design Space, so we need to assign the layers directly to the entities themselves. So first we need to make sure we have layers set up for each type of tool that we're gonna use. So I have a layer for cut and a layer for score. And what I'll do is just select these three edges that are gonna be the score edges. So I'm just holding down the shift key while clicking on each one. And then we'll change the layer to score. And then I'll select all of this and then shift select these edges to deselect them and we'll assign these edges to cut. And if you have color by layer turned on, which 
course it's off screen right now, but if you click this little button here, you can turn on color by layer and it'll show you which layer those entities are assigned to by coloring them whatever color you have set here. Now in order for edges to actually be colored as well, you need to make sure you go into the styles panel, go to edit, go to the edges and make sure color is by material. Because if you just do all same, they're all just gonna appear black by default. But if you go to by material, it's gonna inherit whatever color is assigned to the material. And since we turned on color by layer, the color for the material is gonna be whatever color is set up in the layer itself. Now this score line is actually correct. It's just because we have the axes turned on, the red line was overlapping it. All right, and now if we look at each of these uh, entities, we can see that each edge is kind of disconnected from the next edge. And we could export it just like this. The problem is when it goes to cut it out in on the Cricut Maker, it's gonna literally cut each line one at a time. So it'll plunge down, it'll cut one edge, it'll retract, then it'll go to the next edge, cut that, retract, so on and so forth. It would be a lot better if it would just continuously cut um, the entire perimeter in one action. Now there are actually a couple of ways that you can join all of these lines together. So you could export this into Adobe Illustrator and then select all the edges and use Control J to join them. Or you can use this free plugin called Weld and what it'll do is it'll, it'll create a polyline from the selected connected entities. Now a polyline is the same type of entity that's created when you're using the freehand tool. So the freehand tool creates a bunch of straight edge segments, but when you select it, it creates a polyline also called a curve. And so that's what we wanna do using the weld tool. So let's go ahead and try to weld these line segments together. So the weld uh, command appears in the extensions drop down menu. So we click weld and now when we click on it, it's now a curve. So when this gets exported, it's gonna cut this entire curve all in one movement. Now, if I try to weld these lines so I'm gonna use my custom keyboard shortcut. You can see here I assigned Shift W um, as a custom keyboard shortcut. So if I try to weld these lines, it's not gonna work. And the reason why is because the lines need to be continuous. And right here we have lines that are intersecting at one of these endpoints. So all we need to do is actually isolate these lines into their own group. So let's select all three. We can't make a group uh, right now because if we do, um, the original lines will actually remain in place. So instead, what we're gonna do is select these and press Control X to cut them and we'll create a group out of this and then we'll do paste in place and then make a group out of these. So right click, make group. So now we have two groups, each isolating their own um, line type. And it really doesn't matter how you structure groups because they're just completely ignored in Cricut Design Space, but we're just using them for our own use in um, how we create the polylines or curves. So now we can jump back into the, uh, the cut lines and let's go ahead and select some more paths, shift W. So now that's a curve and we can select these lines here and weld those together as well. All right, and the last thing we need to do is actually delete the faces because I, for some reason, noticed that when I tried to export, um, curves with faces, they were just completely ignored. So um, for whatever reason, we're gonna just delete the face there and we wanna make sure we're back at parallel projection and a front view. And before you export, you wanna just hide whatever you don't want um, to be exported. So you can select these two folded and flat version and right click hide 
And I'm going to turn off hidden geometry so we don't see it. And now we can go to File, Export, 3D Model. And in the options, we're going to select just the edges. And this is the version that I've tested and I know works well. Um, some of these other versions might work as well, but I'm just using uh, release 14. And I'm just going to select the DXF and export that. Now, if you're using software that works well with DXF, you can go ahead and import that right into your software. Cricut Design Space doesn't actually work very well with that format. So we're gonna bring it into Adobe Illustrator to convert it to an SVG. And we wanna click Scale By, select the units that we used in SketchUp, and click OK. It's gonna give you an error about the uh, fonts, which we can just click OK and ignore that. And you can see we've got everything imported nicely into Illustrator and we have, we have the scores on their own layer and we have the cuts on their own layer as well. Now it looks like most of these circles exported properly, but I can see here for some reason some of these circles got exploded. So I would just have to go back into SketchUp and um, just redraw those circles and make sure they don't get exploded before exporting. But once you have that all sorted out, you can just select everything and right click and collect for export as single asset. And you're gonna just um, export this as SVG. And then once you have that SVG made, you just open Cricut Design Space, click Upload, and click Upload Image. And once it imports, all you need to do is select the edges that you want to have scored. Uh, they're already gonna be organized by layer. They're not gonna be labeled properly, but you just select that and go over here and change those to score. And you'll see the lines visually change as well. And from there, you just select all of these and click attach so they all um, maintain their relative position to one another. And then you can go ahead and click make it and you'll have your paper project cut out on the Cricut Maker. All right, that's all I have for you today in this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click the like button and hit subscribe and I will see you in the next video.